Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to talk about key tags. So this is one of the concurrency control approach. Using that, we can uh, control uh, simultaneous access by different users on the same resource. So I have explained uh, briefly about this uh, concurrency control topic in my previous video. If in case you missed it, kindly click on this i button. I would strongly recommend to watch this video and come back here. Okay, let's get started. So I have a simple application, okay, where I'm having a two columns on this simple key and uh, some data is one of the column. So if I click here, so I have only one single instance here that was already created. So if I go inside here, you know, this is my UUID, UUID key and this is my data, okay, nothing else. So I'll show you something here, okay, just do a right click, go to this inspect and network tab, okay. So when you click on this go, there will be a batch request sent to the backend from the UI and uh, this is here if you check a response or preview you will have a uh, response back from the server okay i'll show the response here I try to format here so so you will have you know some metadata as a response and what is the total count of the record currently it is only one okay then few uh, some technical fields and you know our uh, table columns right simple key and some data column okay so this is fine so why I'm showing this like uh, if this the, Currently in this application, I have not implemented key tags. So this is just to confirm, you know, uh, once we implemented the key tag in our applications, differentiates than this, okay. So not to confuse much. So now I'm going to create key tags for my applications, okay. So let's go back to the Eclipse. So this is, my table okay and i have some admin fields also okay so to refer the e tag we need to somehow you know use a, a, a one of the column right so i'm going to choose a column of this local lost change the timestamp okay so i tell you why so this is my root uh, root uh, cds views okay so here i am having only two columns so i am going to include this columns here so i set the name like to local last changed something like this okay so why we need this uh, timestamp field it's basically we need to identify the uh, a version of the record okay so we need to have some kind of a, a, a column which refers the version of the record okay currently i'm having one record okay i just want to refer this record was edited okay or created uh, just few minutes back so how do we you know refer it is basically you know i am using here times up so in uh, different approach uh, we can use hash values or something but the framework will support this mostly uh, uh, the timestamp thing okay because we are we are working on this managed e tag uh, scenario okay and we don't uh, implement our custom logic uh, any in this application so that is why first thing you have to somehow have this column local or change timestamp uh, in your database tables and you have to uh, expose in all the CDS fields. Okay, 
So I have already exposed in my root series rules. Additionally, I need to add an annotation here. Okay. The annotation is semantics dot. So here the system date time dot local instance last changed it to. So this basically this is a very important annotation which basically tells this is going to be the e tag value uh, to the framework. So uh, and the framework will identify this annotations and it will handle the e tag by itself. I will have to do the same thing in my projection view also. Just here we don't need to do any annotations. We just need to simply you know expose this column in the upper view. That is enough. So we have done in the CJS views, and of course we have to do it in the behavior uh, uh, definitions as well. So I will do it for the base behavior definitions where I will just do the mapping first. Take out from here. Okay, so here one more important thing we have to tell the framework. We want to define a e-tag, correct? So here is the right place we can define the e-tag. Just use e-tag master. And you can do the space, and that is a column we have already defined local not changed. Okay, so what do you mean by this master? Okay, there are two things basically master and dependent. Okay, so if your e tag column is in is within your business object, then you should use this master. If this you know uh, uh, column is coming from different behavior definitions, okay, then you have to use the dependent. Okay, read this. And one final last steps. Okay, if you miss this, you won't find the e tag uh, uh, in your uh, UI. Okay, so here you simply use add use e tag. That's it. So I this this is the four step we have to do. I will repeat it again. So this is your base root series views where you have to use uh, you know uh, this change the time stop. Okay, column with the annotations okay if it is a managed e tag then you have to expose in your uh, projection series views once it is done so you can add map mapping here if it is a different uh, name the main thing is you have to add this e tag master for the particular column okay finally you have to use E tag in the projection behavior definition okay fine so all looks good maybe we'll uh, uh, reload the page and check whether the e tag has been enabled or that or not okay so i'll try to do the reload here so to quickly verify i have to do the right click click on inspect okay and in the network tab just click on go you will have a batch called here okay just check the uh, response here you have to check the response output so it's better to use a formatter okay so yeah you could see there is a metadata order okay which is called e tag and it has some random values we don't need to worry about what is this values and all as we are using manage the wrap work uh, to take care of it fine but i just want to show you this is the e tag you will get in the git response okay this is our git response okay this is our git request and this is the response you will get this e tag if you enabled it okay this is to check first thing okay and also you have to pass this e tag uh, you know um, the second thing like whenever you are modifying the data you have to 
pause this whatever you received in the git response right the e tag value you have to pause it as a uh, request header okay so even this this is handled by uh, framework as as the as the um, update request is by default is handling by the framework right so i'll try to do by edit just again i am doing a inspect here network tab just simply i try to add test one just click on save okay you have a modify request here right merge request basically this is update so in the merge request you could see there is something called if match right if match is ADL there whatever this is this is the value we received in our you know uh, the previous get request the same thing okay so this is the value we got and we are requesting in the uh, we are adding in the request header okay so that uh, so that the framework or you know the business object will crash check okay the version of the uh, particular record here in this case this one okay and what do you get the response as this is a successful you know update you will get a new latest response so you could see here this uh, this value and this value are totally different because this is having the updated value so because we have recently did the update and it returns back in the response of the merge saying that okay this is the e tag of the latest record value so how the main question is how it will you know uh, control the concurrency requests okay so for this i just again do this a reload okay i'm doing a duplicate for this i will just consider this is the word attack client one and this is the word attack client two okay so i'm just clicking on this group and for the same okay and i'll use this here okay and also here fine yeah so current now these are the two get request happen from this two client client one and client two both are having the same value and it definitely would have the same e tag value correct yeah so for example the client one has changed the data somehow what would happen then you were um, uh, you for this updated version you will have a different uh, e tag value correct and uh, the client one knows the latest e tag value but the client two still has the version of the old data okay so if let's say if i try to change here let's say three i'll just show you in the inspect again network call yeah so i'll just click on this save so what you are getting an error your changes could not be saved a more recent version is available to make changes to the data so please refresh data if i click on this refresh data of course your data will get refreshed whatever the client one has been updated but fine but you could uh, see some of the important like error details also here so yeah so what it says is the state of entity with the key was already changed okay if match so it says the the what we are trying to change the state right so the particular instance has been already changed okay so you can make sure you, you can somehow handle this so this will really helpful when uh, multiple users trying to access a single record okay so so let's say like if i do a refresh here what would happen i will have another request basically nothing you will have a get uh, get request uh, to the same uh, same key so that you will get the latest record so here it was updated test two so you got the same record test two yes so this is 
this is the overview about uh, heat tag and how do you define and uh, define the heat tag of managed scenario where you know the framework takes care of uh, all of the things so we don't need to do anything except defining the heat tag okay so if you like this video please do thumbs up and uh, subscribe for more videos thank you for watching have a great day